Okay, so chapter five. Yeah, so today is about our new friends, or really our old friends. We just haven't really talked about them much. The whole chapter is on quadrilaterals, but today we are going to focus on parallelograms. All right, dash one parallelograms. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and define parallelogram. And please tell me there's a there's a shortcut to writing this whole word out because that's a doozy. There is. We can use a symbol, which is just a little parallelogram. So if you are tired of writing the word, you can just write the symbol. So what are they? They are defined as quadrilaterals. With two pairs of opposite sides. That are parallel. quadrilaterals with two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. I'll draw one for you. I mean, typically we see them drawn like this. In order to know for sure that it's a parallelogram, I would have to know that the top and bottom are parallel as well as the sides. So if I know that, I know I have a parallelogram. Turns out there's all these other cool things that happen to be true about parallelograms. We're going to prove a couple of them. There's actually four of them that we're going to check out. Okay. So besides having two pairs of opposite sides parallel, um, can anyone think of another characteristic, let's say, of parallelograms that happens to be true? Carson? Uh, same size of pairs are Yeah, so I do have these two pairs of parallel lines. So if I were going to number the angles in here, for example, one, two, three, and four. One of the things that we can pretty easily prove is that any two pairs of consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. What does consecutive even mean? Liam? Right, consecutive just means one right after another. So if you take any pair of two in a row, so one and two, or two and three, or three and four, or four and one even, any pair of consecutive angles is going to be supplementary. Do you see why? How do you know that that's gonna be true? Yeah. 
Julia? Exactly. I have a whole bunch of pairs of same side interiors. So there's a pair of same side interiors. They have to be supplementary. Here's another pair. So they have to be supplementary and so on. Okay. So let's see, how should we call this? Um, uh, let's do fun facts. We can prove about parallelograms. There's going to be four things that we come up with. So I like the first one. Any, any uh, pair of consecutive angles is supplementary. So what's so cool about that is now that we know this, right? If I know that I have a parallelogram and I tell you, okay, this angle right here is, I don't know, let's make it a hundred. What does this angle right here have to be? Eighty. So what does this angle over here have to be? A hundred. So what does this angle down here have to be? Isn't that something? Which leads me to a second fun fact. Not only are consecutive angles supplementary, Isabella. Say it, say it louder. Yes, we're gonna call them opposite angles. So if you have opposite angles, like these, the twos that are, uh, these two that are across from each other, and then also these, aren't those equal to each other? And wouldn't that happen all the time, right? I can do this with the X's if I wanted. So let me do it real quick, just so that we prove it's true all the time and not just for this one random case with uh, 80s and hundreds. If this angle is X, what would this angle up here have to be? Exactly, 180 minus X, which means this angle would be 180 minus all of this, 180 minus X. So the 180s are gonna cancel out and then minus a negative X turns this one back into an X, which means this one is 180 minus X. So you can see no matter what you plug in there for X, this is always going to be true. So my opposite angles, no matter what they are, will always be equal to each other. So that's a second super fun fact. Um, opposite angles will always be equal Now, the next fun fact is a little bit trickier to, uh, to prove, and um, it's going to require me, I'm gonna draw uh, an auxiliary line to prove it, but I'll tell you what it is, and then we'll see if we can figure out how to show that this is going to be a true statement, okay? So my next fun fact is that opposite sides of a parallelogram are, anybody want to guess? What do you think is true about the opposite sides of a parallelogram, Carson? They are equal. I'm going to say control if you don't mind. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Now, let's prove that this is true. I know it looks like they are, but how do we know for sure? Okay, so I'm going to sort of do it over here. And I already mentioned, I'm gonna draw an auxiliary line to help me with this. So again, I have to know that I'm dealing with uh, a parallelogram. So I'd have to know that the top and bottom are parallel and so are the sides. 
So what I can do is I can go ahead and draw in one of the diagonals. So what I want to do is come up with a way, I'm gonna label these with letters too, just so we can talk about them more easily. Um, I'd love to try and show that AB is equal to CD, let's say. I'd really love to show that. There's a way. Just knowing that the tops and bottoms are parallel and the sides are parallel. Isabella, you know what? I'm actually gonna add this in case this helps. I want to get, if I could get this top triangle congruent to this bottom triangle, couldn't I say these sides are congruent by CPCPC? Right? Couldn't I say that? Okay, cool. So that's kind of my goal. I want to get ABC congruent to CDA. What do we have? What do we see for free? You see anything for free? Aiden? You're right, that wasn't my free thing, but that is a true thing. These two are going to be congruent, why? Same side, no, alternate interior. There you go. I know the top and bottoms are parallel, so I do have a pair of alternate interiors that are the same. Patrick? They share side AC with each other. And, Carson? Right, because we know that both sides are parallel, I get both sets of alternate interiors. So now I ask you, do I know that these two triangles are congruent? If, but you got it. So I can get the two triangles congruent by angle side angle, which means that now I can say, yep, therefore side AB has to match up with side CB. And I could have done the whole thing the same way if I had drawn the the, oh, actually, I could do it now, right? Wouldn't CD also have to match up with AD by CPCPC? Yeah, I was thinking you just draw, you don't even have to. I have it right now. So CPCPC gets me opposite sides of this parallelogram equal to each other. Okay, so hooray, we got that. And there's one more fun fact that's going to be a little bit trickier. Or maybe not, I don't know. I think I this for this last one, it might be a good idea to actually write it out in two columns, see if we can make it happen. So I'll tell you what the fun fact is, and then we'll try and prove it. Okay, the last fun fact about parallelograms is going to be that they're diagonals. You ready for this one? Diagonals bisect each other. That's interesting. The diagonals bisect each other? They sure do. So let me, I'm gonna actually let you try and uh, prove this one on your own. So let me give you a you know what, I kind of want to flip so I have room on the other side. If I just squeeze it in here, it's going to get all cramped. Does everybody have what they need from the side? Yeah, okay. All right, so we are going to try to prove this. Oh, yeah. So we're going to start with a parallelogram. We're going to draw in both diagonals. I'm going to label it the same way I have it in my notes. So, F, O, U, R, and then the E in the middle. I don't know why, but there you have it. Okay, so your given information is that F-O-U-R is a parallelogram. 
So if you see this notation like this, the symbol parallelogram, and then the name of the parallelogram, that's what that means. That's saying, hey, this thing, you know it's a parallelogram. Okay, so here's what I want you to prove. Prove if E is the same as EU and prove that RE is the same as EO. Let me ask you this, will all four of these little pieces be the same? No, not necessarily. Could it happen that all four little pieces are the same? Yes. Yes, that happens in a, which, what type of parallelogram would have that happen in it? It does happen in a square, but it doesn't happen in just a normal, regular old parallelogram that's not a square. Um, so try that. See how far you can go. You can use the other fun facts that we just proved, right? So if you wanted to use a pair of consecutive angles being supplementary, you could use that. Um, you could use, what else did we just do? Oh, the, the opposite sides are equal. That might be helpful. Give it a go. See what you can make of this. If you want to label angles, feel free to label angles. Yeah. Do you have to uh, state that the uh, opposite sides are parallel? Yes, I would. And my reason would be definition of parallelogram. That's what the definition of a parallelogram is, that it's a four side figure with two pairs of parallel sides. So if you wanted to do anything with the sides being parallel, I'd have a line that said FO is parallel to UR and or FR is parallel to OU. And they would both be because of the definition of parallelogram. I will say this, if you're using any of the fun facts that we just talked about, that is not definition of parallelogram. The definition was two pairs of parallel sides, not all the fun facts. So if you're using a fun fact, what would I say? Uh, I don't think I use any of them in my proof, but if you are, I would say, um, I'd probably use that gives me uh, notation. So I'd say parallelogram gives me opposite sides congruent, something like that. With that double arrow, you could do that. No, because you're trying to prove it. Yeah, so you can use all the other ones, but not that one yet. No, we're trying to prove that dia diagonals. We're trying to prove that that fun fact is true. We can't use that fun fact yet. Let us prove it first. And then forevermore after the birds, we can use it. The other ones were easy enough to do without writing out the full two columns. Yeah. Oh, let me zoom in a bit. Sorry. You're welcome. FO and are the top and bottom in the side? Yes. Yes. Is that them giving you parallelogram FOUR? The definition of parallelogram is having those two pairs of uh, opposite sides parallel.
Anybody get anywhere? Oh, good. All right. So uh, let me get myself started here. We've got. Let's put in the given is that I have a parallelogram F O U R. Okay, that's all they gave me. Well, uh, really, uh, if the given information is that I have a parallelogram. From that, I might as well go ahead and say that the sides are parallel. So what I know is that F O has to be parallel to R U, and also the uh, sides FR parallel to OU. Okay, so I literally am going to say definition of parallelogram. So that is the definition of a parallelogram. It's a four sided figure that has two pairs of parallel sides. That's it. Don't use definition of parallelogram for anything else. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and mark in the diagram that I did that. So I have these and I have these. So my goal is to get the all these little pieces the same. So I could achieve that. Let me tell me if you agree. If I could get either, it doesn't matter which two, which pair, but if I could get like this triangle converted to this triangle, I could get that by CPCPC. Or I could do the top smaller triangle and the bottom one. It really doesn't matter. So pick one of those two pairs. Do you agree? Do you see that? If you get one of those two pairs of triangles the same, I get it. Eve? Can you not do like the two big triangles? You have to do the two smaller triangles? Uh, which big triangles? Like triangle ORF. ORF. I don't think that that would get me anywhere though, because I want like FE isn't a part of that big one. You see what I'm saying? So you can get these bigger triangles congruent, but I don't know if that's going to help you say that FE is equal to EU or the other way. Oh, yeah, 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 I see that. Okay. So um, let's just, I don't know if everybody did the same thing or not, but I'm going to go this route. I'm going to try and get this one congruent to this one. That's sort of my goal. If you did the top and the bottom, I mean, whatever. Tomato, tomato, doesn't matter. That's what you guys did? Yeah, we did both. I did both top and bottom. Oh. Oh. Same. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Do I have enough to say that those triangles are congruent right now? Definitely not, because I don't have any sides congruent. I haven't said any angles are congruent. I haven't said anything. So, what can I say for these two that I kind of shaded in? Carson? Uh, the part is, you know, one of the fun facts the opposite, you know, uh, sides uh, are congruent. Yes. Say that the left side is the right side. Yeah, so I would say FR, that side, is going to be equal to OU. And so here's how we would write that. Parallelograms give me opposite sides congruent. All right, so let me mark it in the diagram. So now I know this piece and this piece are the same. So I have one side so far. Good. Go ahead, Sam. Can you say the uh, uh, vertical angles? Great idea. Let's do the vertical angles. So I'm going to be lazy and put numbers in these. So there's angle one and there's angle two. So I'll say angle one is equal to angle two because they're vertical. Oh, you know what? I actually don't think that's going to help us, the vertical angles. You would think that it would, but. They do. Oh, uh, I guess you could do third angle theorem with them. No, I did. Uh, I angle. Oh yeah, angle angle side. Duh. Never mind. Never mind. I was thinking the bad word, but I only have one side, not two sides. So we use. Okay, cool. So I have one angle and one side. I need one other bit. I don't have another side. So I'm gonna have to go with another angle. Is there another angle that you would know is the same? Aiden, go ahead. Oh. 
angle RFE in angle WQE. Yeah, you can do that. So I'll do three and I'll call this one four. Those are a pair of ultimate interiors. So angle three, same as angle four. So remember how we write that? I had parallel lines. So they gave me for free these alternate interior angles congruent. You need all of those pieces. We've talked about this before. You can't just say parallel lines give me alternate interior angles. No, they don't. Any lines can be alternate interiors. It's the alternate interiors being congruent. Yep. Could you do it for both angles? Yes. So you could have right here, you could have said three is equal to four. You could have also said if you wanted to do these two angles also, if you felt like it. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah, you could have done that. So now it kind of depends whether you use the vertical angles or not. So you could have gotten these two triangles congruent by angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, if you did both pairs of alternate interiors. Tomato, tomato, doesn't matter. Um, but now I have enough. I have enough to say that those two triangles are congruent. So if I say FER, triangle FER, how would you have to say the other one? But watch the markings. If I say F E R, you say oh. careful. Who matches with F? It's you. See how F has two arcs on it? Four has two arcs on it. Yep. So it's got to be U, and then E matches with itself, and then R would match with O. So again, you're gonna, it depends how you name the first one. So just make sure that you have F and U in the same spot, E and E in the same spot, R and O in the same spot. And the way I did it, I did it by angle, angle side. So it is also possible if you had done both pairs of ultimate interiors, you could have done angle side, angle. That would have been up to you. And now that I have both of those, now can't I say what I was trying to prove? FE is the same as UE or EU as they have in the proof or in what I'm trying to prove either way. So I'm going to say FE, same as EU. And let's see, also RE is supposed to match up with EO, and it does. RE, EO. And what's the reason? Yep, CP, CTC. So now we have proved that in any parallelogram, if you draw in both diagonals, they bisect each other. So you wouldn't have to prove this all again. Now we just get to use this fun fact forever. Because we know that it's fact now. It's not just fact because I said it was fact. We can prove that it is. Oh, how fun. I know. So we already had it in our list, right? Make sure our list is complete. Yes, all four. Any pair of consecutive angles is supplementary. Opposite angles are always equal. Opposite sides are congruent and diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so let me give you, I'm gonna draw you an interesting little uh, parallelogram here. And I'm gonna ask you to find me a whole bunch of things. Okay, so I'm going to give you, give me a minute to write all these, all I want them. Green. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to let you look for a minute. Let me determine what I want in all of these spaces.
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is such a good one. All right, let's do. Um, Oh, I need a, I need a fourth color. <laughs> uh, I don't think that'll show up well enough. Let's try the blue color. Oh yes. Oh gosh. I love, I love these things. All right. Let's do. Cover up the answer there. Just didn't want to see that. Uh, let's make this be. All right, I think I did not mess this up. Uh, well, let's I just messed up. Nothing is drawn to scale. Let's go with that. And let's see. I don't think this is an impossible diagram. Yeah, OK. So. Here's what I want you to find. I want you to find, I'll, I'll make a list over on the side here. Yeah, so see your papers or is it way too dark? It's perfect, oh, okay. All right, so uh, first of all, I need to tell you that ABCD is a parallelogram because without that, you couldn't really go very far at all. So A, B, C, D, okay? So you know that that is true. I want you to find the following. All of these green things are angle measures. Find angles. So you have to find one through seven. And then I also want you to find me the value of X. Looks like we have W, X, Y, W, and Z. It does not matter in what order you find any of these things. Okay, try it. Oops, didn't make any mistakes. It is, yes. Parallelogram A, B, C, D. Hmm. 
Hmm. I might have to give you one more bit of information. Yeah, I do. Uh, I will tell you that. Uh, hold on. Okay, this angle right here is a 30. Mm, I think I did make one error. I did. I'm so sorry if you're working on W and Z. I have to change something. I'm just gonna make that change it to W plus two Z and not twelve anymore. It would now be eleven. Sorry. Otherwise, you got a W and Z could have. It would have been. Uh, it would work for any pair of numbers. But now it will only work for specific. Find as many as you possibly can. There is enough information to find all of them. Go so fast. Make sure you leave me your phone in the box. I'll give you another 30 seconds to find whatever other pieces you can. Yeah, so 11 would be the length of EC.
All right. Let's start with some angles. Okay, one you can find right away is angle three. Right, if this one's 80, what does angle three have to be? 100, right? These two are a linear pair. So that one would have to be 100 degrees, which I don't know if it helps me, but the vertical angles would match. I didn't have to find those, but it might just help me. Um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, okay, so now all of the other angles are these peripheral ones. Um, so um, I'd say, you know, angle seven pretty easily. What's that going to be? It's got to be 40 because they're alternate interiors. So uh, I could do the same thing. If this one's 30, wouldn't its alternate interior also be 30? Yes. And now I can use the fact that I have triangles, right? I have 80, 40. So angle four has to be 60, which means it's the same thing for angle one over here. And then two and five would both have to be 50. So hopefully you got all of those angles. Did you get them? Oh, perfect. Okay, so there's all of those taken care of. Now for X and Y, let's look at. So the X's and Y's, you'll notice I see them as lengths of the outer edge here. Well, if it's a parallelogram, I do know one thing to be true. Opposite sides are equal to each other. So therefore, X plus Y has got to equal five. Well, unfortunately, I can't solve that because uh, I have two variables. But lo and behold, yes, 2x plus y has to equal 7. Now you have the system of equations. You should be able to solve it. If I, uh, I'll just do it out real quick. If I took the top one and I multiplied it by a negative 1, I'd get negative x minus y equals negative 5. Now I can add these two together. I get X, the Y's are gone. X is just two. Once I figure out that X is two, well, then I can just plug it back into the top equation here. That means Y has got to be three. Did you get two and three for X and Y? Oh, good. And then the last one, I basically have to do the same thing uh, for W and Z. These are pieces of the diagonals. We just proved that the diagonals bisect each other so I hope that you wrote the following two equations. One of them would be that W plus two Z is gonna equal 11. So there's one, but again, I can't solve it because I have two variables. So I look to the other diagonal. Oh, W plus Z equals six. So now you can go ahead and solve the system however you would choose to. If I multiply this whole thing by a negative, a negative, that's a negative, that's a negative, add them together, that's going, I get z equals five. Once I know that z is five, I can pop it back in and find out very quickly, oh, w's got to be a one. Did you get those values? You did. Oh, aren't these fun? Okay, any questions on 5 1? Yes, Carson. Well, on the, um, the one you just did, I don't know what you got. Uh, let's see. So this one, oh, you would take one of the triangles. Because you already had these two. You had an 80 and a 40. So for example, or pick any two that you had two angles so you can find the third in, in a triangle. Yep. Yeah, triangle sum theorem, I guess, is what we're using. Okay. Good. Any other questions? No? All righty then. So let me give you your homework, which I have no doubt you will finish before you leave. So it is on page, where the heck is it? There it is. One, whoa, uh, 169 to 170, numbers 1 through 12, 19 to 24, and then 28 to 30. I am going to turn the lights back on, sorry.
I am going to open this up on Jupiter. 